Hey, welcome to another episode of Randy's Ranch. Thank you guys for tuning in. Anybody listening? If you're, no one's listening, I'm still gonna do this because I kind of love this. This is my like my fucking um. This is like my therapy. This is how I get my shit out, you know. But guys, whatever it is, let's let's one thing. There's one thing. There's one thing I gotta say. All right, stop letting the little things be take a bit a lot of space in your mind. In your brain. I'm going to tell you this. Don't let, let little shit take you out of your course. Put you in a different level. Get you all, in, all depressed. All out of your, your your norm. You know. Not not comfort zone. But out of your norm. You know how you are. If you're very optimistic. And you start to let little things happen. Little you, you Once you start to let one little thing get to you. It's like a domino effect. Then there's going to be another one. And another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. And if you try to control all these little things to try to fix them and all this other stuff, you're going to find yourself wasting time on something that does not matter, that does not, that, that doesn't need your time. You just got to let it, let it go. You got to let it fix on its own. Don't force anything because the moment you try to force something, you can create, you can make it worse. You know, and, and especially this, if it's, a, if it's a small thing, ask yourself this, how does this help me in my destiny? How does this help me in my goal? How does this help me in my dreams? Because if it doesn't help you in any of those aspects, then that little, that little thing that you're creating such a big problem for in your mind is going to start to eat up your time. All right. It's going to eat up your time to the point where you're going to start to put things on the side or you're not going to dedicate as much time to maybe it's school. Maybe it's your side business. Maybe it's actually your work or um, maybe it's your fitness or your health that you start to give those small problems time that that time should be invested in something better or it can be invested in something more beneficial rather than the nonsense and bullshit and fucking and all that, you know. Because I highly, I highly believe that once you let one little thing get to you, then all the little things are going to get to you next. You know, you're wasting time on something that doesn't matter. Put your time and effort to your dreams, to your goals. That's what you got to be doing. But at the same time, that means you got to re- reprogram your brain. You got to put your brain in the, in the, in the mechanic shop. You got to put it in the shop. All right. There's something's wrong with, something's wrong with it. You got to learn how to fix. You got to learn where it started and get rid of it. Get rid of that shit. I believe, man, I I always say this. Your, 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 the body is like a car, you know, and I got a lot of people that say that I'm fucking nuts because I think my body is a car. Just because a car is not organic does not mean it cannot be like our body. All right. A car cannot go without certain things. A car cannot cannot uh, run if it doesn't have an engine, if it doesn't have a battery, if it doesn't have fuel, if it doesn't have... um uh wheels if it doesn't have brakes if it doesn't have an axle many things build up the car just like many things build up our body you know we can't really li- we can live with we, you can't really live without a brain because your brain controls everything you really can't live without your heart because your heart pumps blood into all these organs you can't live without certain organs because they're essential or There's a way you can live with them, but it's a hassle. You got to go through um, a different type of procedure. You got to do so many things. And just like a car, a car always has to go. A a car, it's going to be in a shop. There's not one car out there that has not seen a shop. Every car needs to go to a shop, no matter what anybody says. All right. If a car needs to go to a shop every now and then, your mind needs to go into the shop every now and then. Your whole body needs to go to a shop. You know, for me, like... If I put my body through the shop, let's say for fitness wise, if I go to the gym, the gym is my shop. I'm working on how to maybe lose this fat, get arms bigger, get this. All right. Same is for your mind. In order to reprogram your mind, in order to fix some things up in there where, where, um, and I don't mean fix, like there's something wrong with you. No, there's just certain things you have to reprogram because I always say one of my things is not only is the body like a car, but your mind is like a computer cars also have a computer especially the newer ones all right so if your mind's like a computer you got to reprogram certain things all right it's it's like um you just stop you you train your your mind to let go you can train your mind to let go you can train your mind not to care you can train your mind not to do so many things it's hard work because 
you can't just reprogram your, your brain, especially in a day. You can't just make the automatic switch, you know. Like a computer, when you try to put in a new program or you're trying to fix something, it can take time. If you're switching out a part on a computer, that can take time. There's a lot of things that take time. It's not it's not going to be the same time for everything because I also believe my body, my mind is, is uh, different from somebody. Where other people may not... T- you know, do what I, as I do, like I say my mind when I'm, when I'm in the shop is I'm what I'm thinking or what, when I'm, when I'm in a mood or a day that I don't feel like I mean, I tell myself, don't let that get to you. Don't let that get to you. I tell myself long enough where it starts to become a habit where a lot of things just don't start to matter. Or when, you know, um, just certain shit, you can all, we can all reprogram our brain, but it depends on how hard you want to work at to reprogram it to, to not let shit uh, get to you, to maybe forget a person, or to maybe forgive somebody. Everything is hard work. Nothing is not hard work. For some, it's easy. For others, it's hard. But at the same time, we're humans. We're fucking. We're flawed, as I, as I say. We're we're very flawed. But you know, for me, or what I believe, you know, I can be fucking ta- being biased without fucking knowing. You know, but for me, uh, if someone tells me a truth. I'm gonna put that fil- I'm gonna put that truth in through multiple filters to see if what they say is valid to see if there is true to what they're saying. I can't have that bias. That's why I tend to always, if someone tells me something, I'm usually always silent because I'm thinking, you know. Um, if someone tells me, "Oh, we can't do this now. We have to do this some other time because of this, 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 this," it can be. Let's say if you're buying a house and it's a credit thing, and or your credit's not good, or you don't have enough money, you don't have this, you know, I'll probably stay silent. People and people may think of that being bad, like oh, this guy's already not. He doesn't. He 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 ain't gonna commit to buying this, or he ain't gonna try to set up a plan. Like he's down. No. When I'm silent, the majority of the time, I am thinking of a solution. I am thinking what to do. I am thinking how to fix. I I'm thinking a lot of shit. You know, if someone comes up to me and they tell me some truthful shit, where it's like, yo, I think you're flaw. I think you're cool, but I can't fuck with you at this month like this, or maybe a, that was wrong of you to do this. That was wrong of you to do this. I'm silent because I'm thinking I, I, the, like, like the saying goes, sometimes you gotta, you, you have to think before you say certain shit. You can't always go with what you want to say, because sometimes if you go based on emotions, you can create, um, a worse scenario for yourself. You know, you can put yourself down a path you don't want. That's why I always say, learn how to control your emotions. And one way you learn how to control your emotions is you keep your mind, you put your mind in the shop every now and then, and you think about shit. You think about, you go against your character if you want to change something. If there's something about you don't like, you have to do the opposite of that to change it. If you don't like, if you like sugarcoating, you have to do the opposite of that to stop that. So you have to start telling the truth in, 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 in everything, and then... It just gradually gets easier to do. It's like a domino effect. You know, you start somewhere where, you know, usually people who always tell you the most realest thing are the ones who are, who I, who I've noticed and believe are the ones I'll tell you almost what's on their mind or there's like no filter. Like there's no filter on them. Like they're going to say regardless of what it is, there's really no filter on them. But the reason there's no filter on them is that he's also, that that person's also going to be the same one. Well, if you, if you sit down with them in a serious talk and you ask him something or you, you ask him something serious, maybe about you, he's going to give you the honest answer. He's going to give you, or she's going to give you that honest answer. You know, the one, I know so sometimes I can, I can sugarcoat shit too. I, I'm not, I'm not perfect. We all do it, especially sometimes we don't mean to, but we do, you know, but at the same time. When it comes to sugarcoating, you got to understand, learn how to be also real with somebody. Let them know the truth, you know. Don't sugarcoat it. But also, if you say something how you feel, don't apologize for that shit, all right? If this is the way you feel towards this person at this moment, don't apologize. Don't say, I'm sorry. Don't don't say that, you don't know, you know, there's a reason you said it. That means that's what how you feel, you know. Don't shy away from what you feel. You know, if that person's understanding, then he, that, that person will be like, you know what, I no you know, I get it because at the same time, you don't know how another person's going to react, especially if you tell them something that they never expected or they don't want to hear. Some people can really go berserk. Maybe they, they become your worst enemy, you know, while with others, they're more 
the more think they, they think more and they actually maybe give you validation for what you said and actually thank you or they do certain things and a lot of this i am saying from firsthand experience that's happened to me you know uh i can't hold a grudge against anybody i can't hate anybody and sometimes if you tell me the, the truth and it's the ugliest truth most likely i'm gonna put it through a whole bunch of us i'm gonna see if what you say is valid if it's valid i'm gonna not only respect you, I'm going to love you more and I'm going to, you're, you're going to be someone who, has, who I'm most likely going to want to talk to in certain situations if I get myself into. So you can tell me if I'm right or wrong. Those, those are the people that I'm going to be looking for, you know, and I believe that we're all, we're all capable of telling the truth, but we're all, we all sugarcoat too. When in reality, we should be telling the truth at all, not at all times. There's times where maybe it's better to just stay quiet and say the truth later when it's a better time. But definitely, um, definitely, definitely, it's always good to tell somebody how you feel, whether it's in a good way, in a bad way, because at the same time, you may be doing them a favor. But also, I can see where some people don't want to because they don't know how the other person's going to react. Some person can have grudge. Some person can do this. Or some person can be like kind of like me where it's like, you know, I thank you. You actually told me that tr- you told me the truth, you know. This is how you feel. I'm gonna do my best to change. I'm gonna do my best to to not to not give to not like I don't know. It can be whatever. It can be like feeling weird. It can be like uh, you don't like me because I did something. I'm gonna be like, oh, I apologize for that. I didn't know that bugged you, or I apologize. I didn't know that really you know made you feel uncomfortable. You know, that's how I feel. I am. I could be biased. I could be fucking talking out of my ass. I really don't know because this is just through my view. You know, I know, I, I, and like I say, I always say, I'm a human being. I'm, I'm gonna be flawed. So a lot of the shit I'm saying could be flawed at the same time. But this is just what I think, what I feel. You know, and at the same time, that goes again to to a lot of shit I say. There's just just show love and compassion and understanding. If you can show, understand. If you can understand, you can show compassion. If you can show compassion, you can show love. Because if you just try to see things your way, you're never going to understand somebody unless you completely try to understand them. And sometimes, sometimes that means just listening till you understand. Keep asking till you understand. Because a lot of people nowadays that I've seen, they'll hear you, but they don't listen to you. Two different, very different things. Some people hear you just so when you're finished, they can give you the response. Wow. Others listen to you, try to see things how you, how you see them, try to understand your shoes, try to be kind of in your shoes, and then they'll give you their response. Those are two different things that I've seen, you know, and that goes again to one thing I want to uh, attribute that to is when people fuck up, you know, there's a difference from someone who tells you, I am sorry, or I'm sorry. There's a difference from I'm sorry to I apologize. And there's a difference of when they say I'm sorry or they say I apologize. Can you forgive me? When someone asks for that forgiveness, that says a lot about that person's character, at least in my view. Because you're 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 big enough to say where you fucked up, but you're also big enough to ask for the forgiveness. Even though they, they already did, but the fact that you asked for it says a lot about somebody's character in my point of view. Because a lot of, I know a lot of people nowadays only know how to say I'm sorry. Or they know how to just to say I apologize. Every, a lot of people I forgive have, have forgotten to ask for forgiveness. Don't assume you'll be forgiven. Ask for the forgiveness. That shows how humble you are in, in my eyes. This is my point of view. If you ask for forgiveness, that shows how humble you are as a person. Because you're willing not only to accept your fault. But you're willing to ask for that forgiveness rather than assume they're going to forgive you rather than assume rather than assume they say, oh, it's OK, even though they most likely are going to say it. But if you ask for that forgiveness, it adds more to your character. In my point of view, it adds more to your persona that shows how down to earth you are in my point of view. So and I always say this, a lot of the things I say on here. I am trying to help people. I like, I like when, you know, if, if I can, if what I say can help somebody go through a tough time or maybe get them on track on something, I'm going to say it, but I'm also not going to sit here and say that 
I am 100% right in all this because I'm not in, I, I don't claim to know it all. I'm not close to being a know-it-all. I, there's a lot of shit I don't fucking know. I'm not the smartest guy. I feel I am the dumbest guy, most likely, you know, but, um, definitely don't, you know, you don't have to take everything I say, you know, just like if I listen to a person, I don't take everything they say. I take what I can put into my life and I use it and I learn from everybody else. I don't like just learning from one person. I believe we must all learn from uh, different people. It's like an MMA fight. If you watch if you watch UFC, Bellator, or any MMA fight, they t- they learn a set of skills from each different teacher. If you want to learn boxing, you go to the boxing coach. You want to go. You want to learn to to wrestle. You go to a wrestling coach. You want to do Greco wrestling. You go. You know. You want to do sambo. You learn from someone who's going to teach you sambo. Jujitsu. You go to a jujitsu coach. Um. Whether it's jiu-jitsu or whether it's uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you, you find the person who can teach you that. And in mixed martial arts, you have multiple teachers. Muay Thai, kickboxing. Those are two different sports, two different teachers. That's the same way in life. You can't just learn from one person. You have to learn, take a little bit from everybody else and put it in your life. Or put it in your life where you can change or where you can add or you can substitute, you know, it's, it's endless possibilities, endless. But at the same time, that's on, that's on you. How much, how much work are you willing to do to learn? How much work are you willing to do to, to fucking, um, uh, not only learn, but to grow as a person, to be humble, to be a person that you want someone to say, Hey, that's my dad or, or, you know, because here's another thing when it comes to that I wanted to, I want to touch on too. You know, a lot of people say I'm a little bit too nice. I'm this, that I should be like this, but I'm gonna be honest. The type of person I am is I see myself as someone who can, who can meet somebody from my family or from one of my descendants or, you know, like I want to be somebody who I would love my brother to meet, my sister to meet, my, uh, <laughs> future daughter if i have one my future son if i have one my mom my dad stepdad uh my friend my you know it, that's just the person i am like i want to be somebody who i want my 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 loved ones to meet you know so i know what fucking probably with girls probably been my fucking curse but the thing is a lot of people don't understand that part the reason i'm so nice to to a lot of people or to, to that it's because i see part of my family in them you know and i don't want to i i just I, i'd rather help them even if they're probably you know whatever i want to be that because i never know when one of my loved ones is going to meet somebody like that who's going to help them you know maybe you know maybe they did something wrong they did a wrong to me but i forgave them and they need help from me. That can be my loved ones who did who did somebody else wrong. But that person can still help them out. You know, I know it's and I know it's confusing. You know, I'm I'm fucking I'm a weird ass motherfucker, but that's the way I see a lot of a lot of different situations, especially when I meet people or uh when I start conversing where I see part of my loved ones in them. So that's why I'm, I, I tend to try to be as nice as I can. But at the same time, I'm also going to be hard when I get to really know somebody or or when I see that they need to be shown tough love and not th- think that fucking the world, the world fucking um, bends the knee to their every need, you know, because I've seen a lot of that, especially at work. A lot of people think. That the world just should bend the knee to them. No, the world don't give a fuck. The world doesn't know. You got to fucking take responsibility for whatever it is. Don't expect, you know, if, if if I'm running late for work and I go to the bank, I'm not going to fucking tell the bank workers, hey, work faster so I can get to work on time. No, that's not their fucking job. Their job is to do their job. And no matter what pace it is, it's my job to get there fucking earlier. It's my job to make sure I'm on time. It's no one else's. So I feel like with that, everybody needs to be held at some accountability. You know, I can go to, let's say if I go to the bank two hours earlier and something happens that I can't, that I'm waiting there for two hours, I could have gone an hour earlier too. I could have gone an hour earlier. I didn't have to go there two hours. I could have gone an hour earlier next, you know, maybe I could have 
I would have got out on time. But that is where that also, I won't say mean, I'll just say that like that tough love comes out because I see part of my family members in them and it's like, you got to show tough love to everybody at some point in their life, especially your loved ones. You have to regardless or else they're going to get used to you being there. They're going to be used to getting some shit easy. It's not, it's not, that's not how the world works. The world's not going to give you something easy. You got to put fucking, you got to put fucking work in. That's how it is. But I'm going to cut it there, guys. Thank you guys for listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Randy's Rants. Also, uh, my Instagram, Randy, triple, triple 20, triple spelled out T R I P L E two zero Randy triple 20. Uh, also got, um, my Randy's Rants, uh, Snapchat, definitely, uh, love for you guys to add there, especially hopefully when I'm able to go to my regular time, especially at work, cause right now it's like 80 hour day. So I'm trying to fill in, filling spots, you know, so I'm trying to record as many episodes as I can in a day to, to release some throughout the week. I'm hoping to get a few more recorded this week, but we'll see how that goes. It's just fucking timing, but you know what? I ain't gonna fucking complain for these 80 hours because you know what? While a lot of people don't are losing their job or a lot of people are, their jobs are being on hold. I somehow was blessed with more hours, you know, so I really can't complain. I just got to thank uh, life for that. And I'm going to keep pushing forward and, uh, you just have that. I don't, I, I don't get tired attitude. Kevin from, you know, Kevin Gates, uh, I don't get tired. You got six jobs, but you don't get tired. You got 20 jobs. You don't get tired. You got to keep pushing, but thank you guys. Love you guys. Greatness is one at a time. Always remember that. Greatness is not a day, a time. It's not a second. It's not an hour. It's not a minute. It's not a day. It's not a month. Not a year. Greatness is not a decade or a century. Greatness is your whole lifetime. You got to be great every fucking day, guys. Remember that. So love you guys. Stay safe. Be safe, especially in these crazy times. But love you guys.